closet open and the guy he like jumps out and he's like laying on the ground and he's and he's just crawled back in there he's screaming and you could tell that he is getting probably what he deserves and she looks down and she sees blood come from out from underneath the closet door she turns around and she starts to, to run towards the living room and then like she's in there she sees the bottle still spinning and then all of a sudden <laughs> this group of teens decide that they're gonna go and have fun just like teens always do and they they're gonna break into this house the thing is is this house looks like it's in a nice neighborhood and that it is it's a nice home until you start to look at the inside and the inside shows like there's newspapers covered up the windows uh there's drawers that are just like half open and stuff looks like it's been ransacked now this this house appears like it is nice but then you look at all these things and you kind of get the feeling that something bad is about to happen to these kids so later we find out that the house is actually haunted as the teens make their way through it and then them a couple of the teens they're in love and you can tell they're about to go for a kiss and then all of a sudden there's this crash that comes in from the from the back of the house now this crash is actually the other teens playing around and you know not really respecting the house and you know like we're supposed to respect a haunted house that's the reason why a lot of people get hurt in these things they don't go in with with the respect they should have for the spirits now we find out that the legend is that the owner was actually murdered and there's blood everywhere all over the house but the body was never found now with that being said they thought it was a good idea to pull out a ouija board and talk to the spirits now they've already like ransacked the house a little bit they broke some stuff they broke the door getting in and now they're going to try to talk to the spirits and expect them to talk back but then all of a sudden there was a change in the atmosphere and one guy suggests that instead they su they should play the game seven minutes in hell now we notice that one of the teens is feeling a sense of unease and this leads the other girl to remind her that she's there for the guy like she's she's there to to get love you know she, she has a crush on this guy obviously so she kind of decides that she's gonna stay i think she probably should have went you know went ahead and left what do you think let me know in the comments so obviously her crush is the first one that is selected he spins a bottle and she's like in anticipation and we notice that she's she's watching as as to see kind of like where he's looking around and he's looking at her and she's looking at him and the bottle actually lands on her and we, you know we kind of like these guys in this in this moment but then all of a sudden we know that things is about to take a dark turn and now everybody is like yeah go girl whatever but and then she, he knows that she's nervous so he grabs her hand and kind of leads her down this hallway that and you notice that it's super dark in there and like just dingy and something bad has happened in this house definitely so they go down the hallway and they find the door on the right he opens up the door and then they go inside now here they are they're in this closet and and she's like kind of feeling it but not really and then she's kind of like filling them out and he's saying stuff that's like you know we can do whatever we can just tell him we did whatever and she's like i don't want to just tell him that and he's like okay well we can and she's like no she pushes him away and then next thing you know like she decides like she tries to open the door they notice that the door is locked and so they shake the door they're like let us out and and there's this laughing going on but it doesn't sound like the other kids it sounds a lot more sinister a lot more just eerie gut richie and that's what the lights go out and all of a sudden there's this noise and it sounds like breathing in the dark behind him and they stop and they listen and they hear this heavy breathing noise that's just directly behind him and he's scared to turn around and she's kind of scared to really look and and you kind of know this that there's this tension building in this house all of a sudden she's looking into the darkness and she's just watching and she sees this face appear 
and she starts to scream and he's like just looking at her like what's going on and all of a sudden he feels this thing on his back and he's like what's on my back and she's then that's when you see the claws come around and just grabs a hold of him and the girl she's screaming that's when there was a crunch and like his body just squirted blood all over and she's screaming and she's trying to unlock the door and open it and she shakes it and she's finally able to open it and she gets out and she's looking around and she notices that something is different and she hears something and she walks towards the living room and nobody is there none of their friends are there all you see is the candles and the bottle just spinning around and around and around and the bottle's just spinning and spinning and spinning really fast and she's just watching it and it stops directly on her and then just a moment later it turns towards the darkness as if it's looking at something that she can't see that's in the darkness over there and all of a sudden she looks over and she sees this human-like thing but it's not really human-like and it, it's a woman and she's all crawling and creepy like in those weird like movies and she stands up and she straightens out she's walking towards her and she's looking at her and she looks like a woman but you can tell in her eyes that something isn't right there's veins all over her face there's just something off about this lady and then all of a sudden the thing backs up into the darkness it starts to morph and change and and like just its arms are all going around and then you can tell like it it's changing and it walks out and it looks just like her and you could only think is this like a mimic or something is this is this thing gonna try to take over her life it, like try to become her is that like it's game what's the deal and at that moment she's she freaks out she turns and she starts running and she just like always she runs up the stairs instead of trying to go out the window or the door that they broke to get in so she runs up the stairs and this thing you could hear it and it, it's kind of like stalking her a little bit when she gets up the stairs she's looking around and for some reason she plots this flashlight over in the corner and she's and she shines it and, and she comes upon this door with blood like bloody handprints all over it and i don't know why like me i would have turned and walked the other way but she actually goes towards this door with these bloody handprints on it so she walks into this room and you could tell it's a bathroom but it, there's blood prints everywhere and there's this shower curtain there's blood prints all over shower curtain and i don't know why but she decides to open it and inside is the the guy that she was in the closet with that she was supposed to spend seven minutes in heaven with uh and he's down there and he's just kind of freaked out and he's like she looks like you and she's like i think we got to go back to the closet uh, i'm i'm guessing that the closet was like led them to a different dimension or something and now that's the reason why the friends ain't there and everything kind of looks the same but the friends ain't really there you know so then they head back towards the closet so they're taking their time they're trying to be extremely quiet and they're going down the stairs and they're looking around and he's standing behind her and you could tell that he's been hurt pretty bad looks like he's got some flesh missing and stuff and they go down and they're looking around and they don't see anything but as she steps on the crowd, she steps on glass, making her scream and making a loud noise. And that's when they heard it. They heard this weird noise and they're looking around and they turn around and they look up the stairs and they could see that there's this weird shadow coming on the wall. But it's not just like walking down. It's looking like it's crawling on the ceiling towards them. And then all of a sudden, this ass wipe, he, he looks down at her and she looks up at him and she's like, I know what you're thinking, but don't do it. And he's looking at her and he's thinking, I just got to get away. And so like he grabs her and throws her to the ground real hard and he hurts her. And then he runs and jumps in the claws. Like, and she's laying there. She's hurting. She's looking around. She knows that this thing is just, it's going to get her at any point in time. It's just, it's right around the corner and she's going to turn around and it's going to be right in her face. And she just knows this and she's looking around and all of a sudden you, you hear the door to the, like it shows him. He's just the guy he comes out of the closet and God, he goes towards her and then he leaps and he grabs her pushes her to the ground and but this ain't the guy this is this whatever this thing is this mimic type creature that is trying to either take their lives and get loose or something i don't know what it's trying to do but it just switches back and forth between them and then all of a sudden it becomes the the nasty looking lady again i'm guessing that this is probably the the lady who was murdered in the house it's like her spirit or something then all of a sudden the timer goes off and you you're brought back to the kids and everybody's sitting in the living room 
and the bottle stops and everything and, and they turn up and they they look they have this weird look on their face what they see her and then they're just looking like they're thinking what the hell has happened here and she walks out and she's all bloody and that you could only think that they're thinking like what happened in that closet and she walks over and she sits down and you're thinking is this really her or is this this mimic thing and she you can look at her face and she looks like she's about to smile but then starts to cry like she's trying to figure out if you know how to actually do this 